Welcome to Healing Touch. What's happening? Our online service every Sunday at 11 a.m. Facebook Live. Zoom Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Weekly prayer conference call every Monday and Friday at 7 p.m. www.thelifecenter.org Now, here's Bishop Kimball with today's message. Well, good morning, everyone, and great blessings from God to you today. Thank God for this opportunity. Thank God for the overseer, the pastor, the friend, the colleague, the man of God who sits to my left. I thank God for you, brother. Thank you, Bishop. I, I, I really do. Uh, before we start on this dynamic subject matter this morning, I want us to take a little time in prayer. I want you to get your Bibles. We will be reading scripture. That's, that's very important that you have your Bible. I was told early on by my mother, I used to ask her a lot of questions when I First got saved, she said, why don't you get your Bible and read it for yourself? <laughs> that was the best advice I ever had. Get your Bible and read it for yourself. And I did. I remember my first Bible was a Schofield reference Bible. Get your Bible, read it for yourself. I'm gonna pass that on. Let's, let's go to the throne of God and let's ask God's blessings upon us today as we look at the subject matter of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day you've given us. We bless you, Lord God, yes. because of all your blessings toward us. Yes. You have caused us to be here today, which means you're not finished with us. Yes, Lord. As we walk the face of the earth, may we walk it in faith, may we walk it in peace, and may we walk it knowing that you walk with us. Yes, we're not Lord. alone. Thank you, God. You said you never leave us nor forsake us. You'll be with us always, even to the end of this age. And I thank you for that. Yes. And I bless your name even now. And everyone that's listening, every household, oh God, wherever you may be, if you hear my voice, I pray that the Holy Spirit of the true and the living God may impart to you the wisdom and understanding yes. that you will need to make it through this life and through this day. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Well, let me start right here by saying this is not an easy subject matter. It's not something we're going to gloss over. It's going to take a little time, but we, we're going to get there because God has given us this word so we can actually live by it. We can walk by it, and we'll be blessed by it. In dealing with the subject of holiness and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. It caused such a confusion and such a stir until to this very day. We're still not certain. We're still a bit, I wouldn't say confused, but without understanding the true mission and the true work of the Holy Spirit. It's unfortunate that I have to say it all depends on what denomination perspective you have, 
that's going to depend on what you believe about the Holy Spirit. Now, I believe God to be true to his word, and I believe God to be true to his people, that he wouldn't give us something only to have us not understand it, not being able to live by it, and that way we're not able to please God. But the Holy Spirit and the things of the Spirit has been a subject matter, something that's been misunderstood for a long time. I want to read this passage of Scripture as, as I make my, my introductory comments, and that is Leviticus chapter 11, 43 through 45. Do not render yourselves detestable through any of the swarming things that swarm. And you shall not make yourselves unclean with them so that you become unclean. For I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy. For I am holy. And you shall not make yourselves unclean with any of the swarming things that swarm on the earth. Verse 45. For I am the Lord who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God. That was his specific purpose, to be your God, thus you shall be holy, for I am holy. So Peter quotes this in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 14, I believe, which, which lets us know that there are no two sides to holiness. You don't have an Old Testament side and a New Testament side. There's only one Lord. There's only one Holy Spirit. So what God said in Leviticus and what Peter says through the Spirit in 1 Peter, it's the same Spirit. We, we can't divide it up. Amen. It's one Spirit, and we must come together and understand what that one Spirit of God will do through us and in us when we believe it and receive it. Mm -hmm. Now, in 3... 3, 11, 3, 12, somewhere in the third century, the Emperor Constantine had declared the Roman Empire a Christian Empire. The Christian, I mean, the Roman Empire went from being totally pagan when Jesus was born, right up until the time Constantine was emperor. He declared Rome a Christian Empire. A lot of saints died. A lot of things mm -hmm. were done to them. Mm -hmm. But they conquered the Roman Empire. My God, look what God could do through people who yield yes. to his spirit. Well, the church was not really together then. So what Constantine did in 325, he called a, a council mm -hmm. together in Nicaea, which is the present day Turkey. He called a council so that a lot of the misunderstanding and confusion about Jesus could be settled. The question was the divinity of Jesus. Yes. Well, there was one teaching out there by Arian that said that Jesus was not just a man, but he wasn't God. Somewhere in between, that's, that's confusing. So Constantine, the emperor, he wanted clarity. So he called all these clerics together and they came up what you would call the Nicene Creed. And those things were written down and this is what Christians believe. Now many believe the Nicene Creed was picked up by the Apostle Creed. They, they, they're similar, but they're not the same. But those creeds and those councils had to come together because of the misunderstanding of Jesus and the Spirit. There's always been some kind of confusion. There's always been some misunderstanding. And it's hard to say today that our denominational breakdown actually is based on how certain groups interpret Scripture. If you are of one denomination of persuasion, there's something in the scripture you quote or you actually believe a little different. But one of the main things that I, I, I believe and I see that's happening, we misunderstand and we always disagree about the work of the Holy Spirit. 
and that was who Jesus said he would send so we'll have another comforter or another of the same kind. In other words, with Jesus saying, I'm going to send another me. So how could we walk with Jesus and have his spirit and come up with so many different beliefs and understandings? Mm -hmm. We want to take a little time to deal biblically with this so that you will have some clarity and some understanding on what the scriptures teach about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, Bishop, that's a great point you brought about the Nicene Council because mm -hmm. it was also during that same council that Arian tried to propagate that the Holy Spirit was just an influence. Yes. And that yes. he was not part of, of the Trinity. Trinity. Yes. Yeah. And they disregarded that as well to establish what we know as our foundational truths as well. And, you know, the word of God lets us know that it's, it's more important that, than anything that we have a personal relationship with God. We do that through the aid and the help of, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yes. Because we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, God in his infinite wisdom in eternity established a means for us to come back in right relationship with him. And I love the way what the Apostle Paul was told Titus over in Titus chapter 3 that uh, at the, and here again, as you mentioned earlier, the whole objective here is godly living. How do and we live to please in God. this day and time that bring pleasure and it pleases God? Right. So he reminded them that this is how we used to be. And this is one thing I believe the church, we have to come to grips with. Every one of us have a past. And to deny that past says that we're not being true to ourselves, which don't allow us to make the transition mm -hmm. necessary to walk upright before God. Mm -hmm. He reminded them in chapter three that you were disobedient. Yes. You were enslaved to various lusts. You spent your time in malice. You was envious. You was hateful and hated others. Mm -hmm. But this is the beauty part. Here's the turning point. In verse four, he says, but when the kindness of God, God our awesome. savior, and his love for mankind appeared, mm -hmm. he saved us. Mm -hmm not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, mm -hmm. but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Well, here's why. So that being justified by his grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So I brought this point out to make one statement. The Holy Spirit brings us back in relationship with God by means of regeneration. Mm -hmm. To regenerate simply means to give life. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit causes the new birth. He is the author. Therefore, regeneration by the Holy Spirit is the spiritual counterpart to human reproduction in the physical realm. Human regeneration produces human life, mm -hmm. while spiritual regeneration mm -hmm. produces spiritual, spiritual life. life. Makes sense. The Holy Spirit produces the new birth, but he does it through the instrumentality, watch this, of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a very, very, very important point. Why is it then holiness is outdated today? When I say it's outdated, because our views are not too far different. When we say ours, I'm talking about the church. Yes. yes. Our views are not too much different from the world's view about materialism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our views are not real different than the world's view on racism. Mm -hmm. It's not, not much different. Mm -hmm. If you look at the structure and the breakdown of churches, uh, they, may, they may be multicultural or whatever, but we don't call it the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. It's yes. a title before that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the African American Church, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Methodist Church, the Presbyterian. Why are those titles significant mm -hmm. if we are the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ? If it's true that he purchased the church yes. with his own blood. Uh -huh. It ought to be this, this Jesus church. Amen. And the people Amen. in here are Jesus people. Yes. Why does race and nationality and mm -hmm. sex or whatever have to do with it? What does yeah. it have to do with it? Mm -hmm. now, I think we, we're too close to the world to even make a difference. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and as far as what sin 
and what's not seen. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. there it is again. Uh, it's too close to call. That's right. You know, That's our right. view of sin is just like the world's view of sin. But most of all, the views of this present culture mm -hmm. has actually gotten into the church in a very strong way mm -hmm. until we are almost afraid to make that dividing line. Yes. The prophet was told to cry loud, spare not, spare not. Mm -hmm. lift up your voice like a trumpet, mm -hmm. show my people their my transgressions yes. and the house of Israel their sin. There's just certain things are not going to sit right with people, mm -hmm. especially those who are involved with it. Amen. That's, Amen. that's, that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is this difference that we must make a difference between the clean and the un, unclean. Yes. Now, Understanding what holiness is, and it's not a bad word, it's, it's a very good word, is to really understand who God is. Yes. Yeah, God say, be holy, why? I'm holy. I'm holy. This, this, this is what he said. Now that isn't difficult to do. It, mm -hmm. it really isn't difficult to do. It is a decision we make mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. following Jesus. Yes. Well, how else could you follow Jesus? if you hadn't made the decision mm -hmm. to be like God. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's just something I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Now, the church at Corinth, the church at Ephesus, and, 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 and many, many of these churches, they had many problems in, in them. Well, let's, let's deal with Corinth first. Mm -hmm. uh, there was division in the church. Spiritually, they were immature. Mm -hmm. They were uh, taking one another to court. Paul talked about lawsuits. They were actually... Um, putting up with such immorality that a man was sleeping with his father's wife and must have been his stepmother. Mm -hmm. all, all of this, they didn't understand the spiritual gifts. They, 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 they didn't. It was just a messed up church mm -hmm. is what it was. Mm -hmm. Well, what does Paul write to them in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 2? What does he call them? He <laughs> says, to the church of God which is at Corinth, to those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, saints by calling. Well, we wouldn't call them kind of people saints today. <laughs> Let me tell you what he Not called. He says saints by calling are calling. called mm -hmm. to be saints. Mm -hmm. Those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. Saints by calling, with all who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Why would he call these people saints? Mm -hmm. why, 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 why would he consider them sanctified? Hmm. Well, he, maybe, maybe he knows something we don't know. Then in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, let's, let's, let's read this. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. This is what he said to the same group of people, but here's a different letter. He said, to the church of God, verse 1, which is at Corinth, with all the saints. He keep calling these people saints. <laughs> with all the saints who are throughout Achaia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Blessed be God. Yes. He's dealing with somebody who sound like they've never sinned. Mm -hmm. But these people had a lot of stuff going on. You come down to uh, verse, verse 3 of 2 Corinthians, and what do you say? Blessed be God, the Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. comfort. That, that's, that's 2 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. He said, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul is really using some terms that the 21st century, we, we wouldn't use that. Mm -hmm. We would call these people hypocrites. It's, it's how, we, how we see each other. Yes. Just look at yes. how people, you, you can't do anything wrong. You, you have to walk as if I'm perfect mm -hmm. and everybody walking the face of this earth knows that's not true. That's right. It's going to take right. a lifetime for us to walk this thing out. Mm -hmm. Paul said all that live God in Christ Jesus is going to suffer persecution. Mm -hmm. But there have been some strange doctrines that have crossed our ears in days past you can have what you want yeah. you can call things that be not the scriptures say he call it that's God that's right God yeah. call it things that be not as though they were his plan 
and, and, and his will for our lives, he determines right. that. Yes, sir. And it yes. was, I'm, I'm glad Paul didn't think like that because he was called to walk a life that was really, really, really a pattern that I don't think many apostles today would want to want to walk, walk that road he walked yes. down. I'm, I'm, I'm not finished here because mm -hmm. he writes to the church at Ephesus. Mm -hmm. All of these churches in, in, in Ephesus, uh, Ephesians chapter one, listen to what he called the, the, the Ephesians. He says in, 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 in verse one, mm -hmm. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God uh -huh. to the saints. Yes. To the saints. Mm -hmm. They were saints to the mm -hmm. apostle Paul. Mm -hmm who are in Ephesus. And this was the same church that he had called the elders of the church together down at, uh, when he was in, uh, uh, he, he was, uh, the name of the place. Um, well, he called them together mm -hmm. in Acts 20. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he told them, I know after my departure, many grievous, many grievous wolves yes. yeah. gonna come in, not sparing the flock, mm -hmm. even from among yourselves. Yes. Shall men arise, speaking perverse thing to draw men after them. Mm -hmm. But when he writes this letter to them, he called them saints. <laughs> I don't think we really understand, and we want to clear this up today, and we'll go on from here. Yes, we, don't, we don't understand why is this man calling these people saints? Mm -hmm. And then you go to Colossians, the church at Colossae. Listen to what he says to the church there. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 2, to the saints and faithful brethren. Yes. Some, something is really, I start reading this to say, there's something we don't understand, man. Mm -hmm. If only we would call, we don't call each other saints. We, no. we, we, we don't greet each other like that. Yeah. We greet each other according to what we hear about him and know no, about him. And that's right. I'm, I'm, I, I thank God that he doesn't do that. Yes. If I would mark iniquity, who we'll would stand? stand. Yes, None right. of us. There would be no church mm -hmm. if, if God started dealing with us the way mm -hmm. we deserve. Yes. But we, yeah. his mercy Thank and his God. long sermon. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. So yes. he said, saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are at Colossae, mm -hmm. grace to you and peace from God our Father. We give thanks to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Yes. Paul knew something. Yes that yes. we don't know today that mm -hmm. we should learn. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 I, I'm, I'm not done. I want to use one more, mm -hmm. and that's the book of uh, Philippians. Mm -hmm. Chapter chapter 4, verse 21, 22. Look, 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 look at what he says as he ends this letter. Mm -hmm. He says, greet every saint in Christ Jesus. <laughs> yes. The brethren who are with me greet you. Mm -hmm. All the saints greet you. These churches was full of saints. My God. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> and he addressed them as that. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. Why did he do that? Mm -hmm. The 21st century term for that is hypocrites. They just it's just messing over Jesus church. We have so much negativity to say about this. And it's kind of like what the Apostle Paul says, the, our understanding has not been enlightened. Yeah. We don't mm -hmm. understand and, or know the matter as well as mm -hmm. we think we do. When, when, when he called them saints, he was referring to them as being holy. Mm -hmm. All right, that's, that's, that's good. See, the, the word saint, agios, sanctified, agiosmos, it refers to a state of being, yes. not our character. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what it is. Like, there's a state you're in, mm -hmm. but many times the character doesn't always match up with the, with the state. state. Mm -hmm. it, when, when God saved you, he saved you, and maybe through the ignorance and maybe through the uh, lack of experience, I have not learned to walk the way I ought to walk. That's right. But That's God right. put me in a place where mm -hmm. I could learn. That's right. It's like a newborn baby. He's, he's still a boy or girl. They're mm -hmm. growing up to be a man and a woman, mm -hmm. but there's so much you have to do for them mm -hmm. because of the state they're in. That's right. You know, it's yeah. one thing to be a babe because you are that 
six or seven months old. Mm -hmm. it's, it, that's one thing. But it's one thing to be a babe in Christ when you're 30 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a much different thing, and we should understand that. So when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, what did that mean when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Uh, you made a commitment. This, this is what you really did. You made a commitment to be accepted by God mm -hmm. and to be made holy. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's the commitment you made. Following Jesus is not so much as just walking behind him. When, when you decide, I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, you have accepted the means yes. by which God wants to bring you into the family. Mm -hmm. No man could come to the family mm -hmm. but by me. This yes. is what he said. Yes. As a result of that commitment, then you could now be moral, you can be saved, you can live the way God wants you to live, mm -hmm. you have been delivered from your past, but you have not become full grown with the understanding where you can walk in it. That's he right. delivered you. That's right. Now, why would Jesus teach us to pray, forgive us our debts, mm -hmm. as we forgive those indebted to us? Now, I've been saved a long time, man. Yeah. But you know, every day I have to ask God to forgive me. Right. Why do we ask God to forgive us? Because we've done the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, the, that's the only reason you would ask. Jesus didn't pray that way. When <laughs> the disciples right. say, teach us to pray, he said, this is the way you pray. You pray. <laughs> Jesus never went to God to say, oh, Lord, I, I missed it yeah. today. Yeah. He, he didn't do that. He was the man that God set for our example. Amen. The call was not to anything, when, when, when you became uh, a child of God, the call was not to anything but to what? God's rule over your life. Amen. This, this is what you're saying. Amen. I'm giving my life to God. Yes. You yes. rule over my life. Lord over me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm now subject to your decisions. That's right. The only way we can have God's best is he have to make the decision. Amen. I can't Amen. make decision on my own and expect to have the best mm -hmm. because I made some bad decisions yes. in my life. Amen. Made some bad. So we have to let say, God, you make the decision. Amen. I, I, I yield my life to you. We were first called. The call was to be like God through Christ. Mm -hmm. To be like God through Christ. We cannot please God but through Jesus Christ. Yes. Our life, according to Ephesians 2, 6, is mm -hmm. hidden with Christ. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 3, verse 3. That by revelation there was made known to me mm -hmm. the mystery as I wrote before you in brief. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's, 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 that's Ephesians 3. Mm -hmm. I want Colossians, Colossians 3. Here we go. Colossians 3, 3. Yeah. No. We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the saints. Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, mm -hmm. of which you previously heard in the word of truth, the, the, the word of truth, the gospel, mm -hmm. which has come to you, but as in all the world, it is constantly bearing fruit and increasing, even as it has been doing in you, mm -hmm. as long as as you are hearing the word of God, yes. it's working where? In you. In you. Yes. In you. One of the most damaging things a Christian could do is to back away from the word Amen. of God. Amen. You have no cleaning power now. You have no energizing power. You have nothing to actually keep your, 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 your life the way God wanted mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 and that's such a, a, a great misconception that the believer think that they no longer have what it takes for God to keep them. Because the Apostle Paul made something very clear and he introduces two words here in these mm -hmm. couple of passages. In Ephesians chapter one, mm -hmm. verses 13 and 14, he says, in him you also, after listening to the message of truth, mm -hmm. the gospel of mm -hmm. your salvation, mm -hmm. having also believed you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. Mm -hmm. Who is given as a pledge of our inheritance 
with a view to the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his mm. glory. Now, the Apostle Paul introduces two words in these two verses, and that's the word seal uh -huh. and pledge. Okay. The Holy Spirit is identified as the seal to believers. Okay. Figuratively, sealing means to mark wow. as a means of identification so that the mark which mm -hmm. denotes ownership also carries with it the protection of the owner. Mm -hmm. Several important truths emerge from the sealing of the spirit. Three things. One, it signifies ownership by God. Uh -huh. The spirit seal upon the believers indicates that the believer belongs to God. Number two, it suggests security. The seal is permanent. Mm -hmm for the day of redemption, according to Ephesians 4, verse 30. And the third point is, it is also suggests authority. Just as the Roman authority existed over the area where the Roman seal was placed, so the authority of God is over the believer to whom he has given his yeah. Holy Spirit. That's, that's, that's very important. Mm -hmm. It really is. Then the, he mentions the second word, pledge, in, the ver in verse 14, which reveals the nature Mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit as the down payment of our ultimate and complete glorification in heaven. Mm -hmm. Like I say, this is a lifelong process. It's, it's, it's lifelong. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's lifelong. It's not a quick fix. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's a permanent one. Yes. Yes. If we walk through this thing. Amen. As Paul said, I kept the faith. Yes. I, I, I fought a good fight. Mm -hmm. I kept the faith. Many things going to come against you for you to deny the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but getting back to the point of the saint, mm -hmm. then a, a saint really is one who is, is separated. Yes. Separated unto God. Unto God. Let's, let's, mm -hmm. Listen to what the scriptures say. Separated unto God. This is a personal commitment you make, mm -hmm. regardless of the crowd or whatever. Mm -hmm. You make a personal commitment to be separate under, under God. That's what the word sanctification is. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really didn't understand that, 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 that scripture in 1 Corinthians 7, say the unsaved husband is sanctified by the wife. I said, wow, how, how, how can that be? Mm -hmm. uh, God is telling us something there. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the influence of the Holy Spirit, the influence of the Holy Spirit yes. with the saved person mm -hmm will actually put the saved person in the position to help the unsaved. It's not the opposite. Right. Some people think, I don't want to live with that unsaved man, that unsaved woman. Well, you take the influence the Holy Spirit have to work for him. Wow. You, you, wow. you got to be there. Mm -hmm. So how does a wife sanctify her husband? It's the influence of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You yeah. got to believe God. Yeah. Amen. That Amen. great is he that is in, in me, me yes. than he that is in the world. That's right. uh, and, and Paul used that word, uh, 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 sanctified mm -hmm. by the wife. I said, wow, mm -hmm. man, that's something that the Holy Spirit gives that person mm -hmm. that kind of influence. Yes. Now you got to pray through it Amen. and you got to believe, believe in God, mm -hmm. but God can do it. If, mm -hmm. he, if he couldn't do it, it never would have been in the scripture. That's right. So don't that's leave right. the man if he's unsaved or the yeah. woman. You the influence the yes. Holy Spirit going to use. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. That's, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 7, <laughs> I believe in verse 14, yes. 15. You, you yes. just read the whole chapter there in 1 Corinthians. Amen. You run, run, run cross it. So now a saint is one who is sanctified or separate mm -hmm. or separated. When God uses anything, he separates it. Mm. Uh, now, now, li li listen to what I'm saying. He takes it from the common and mm. bring it over to the holy. That is the opposite of holiness is common. That's good. Common. Mm -hmm. Not unrighteousness, unholy. It's common. If mm. it's not holy, it's common. Yes. As God yes. told Peter, call nothing I made common or unclean. Mm -hmm. So a saint is one who is sanctified or set apart. Set apart for what? Well, the Bible makes it perfectly clear. First Corinthians chapter 6, 19, he writes to the saints. We just got through saying he called these people saints. They had just not learned how to walk in all God did for them. Yes. So yes. you don't get a little bit, little bit, little bit. You know, I, I, I hear this song on the radio. I don't hear it as much now. And the song always puzzled me. I need a little more Jesus as if he's given to us in different portions. Mm -hmm. I need a little more Jesus. No, you need a little bit more wisdom. Glory. You need understanding. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I need a little more Jesus. And some people, child, you need to get, Lord, give me a little more Jesus. <laughs> Help me well, what part of him did you miss? <laughs> In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19, yes. Paul makes it very clear about this separate, how God separates. He says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. who is in you, whom you have from God, yes. and that you are not your own? You don't belong to yourself no more. Mm -hmm. God separated you from that old life. You belong to him now. Yes. You are not your own, for you have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. Amen. Now he separated you from that old life, and he separated you under Christ Jesus. Now, in Titus chapter 2 and verse 14, this is what Paul writes to Titus, and he tells him, Titus chapter 2 verse 14, he said, now, who say, who gave himself, speaking of Jesus, for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify us or to purify for himself yes. a people of his own possession. You have mm -hmm. a new owner now. Yes. Yes. Zealous for good works. Mm -hmm. So now we were separated from the old life unto Christ. He purchased us with his own blood. The church belongs to Jesus. The body belongs to the Lord. This is what he said. His own possessions, mm -hmm. his own possession, zealous for good deeds. Now we were separated unto Christ. We just wasn't separated and left hanging out there. Yes, right. People were set apart. They were, were, were separate. Israel was in Leviticus 20, 26. If, you, if, if you're not following us in the scripture, I want you to write it down. The people were separate or set apart. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 26. This is what it says. Thus you ought to be holy to me. For I, the Lord, am holy, and I have set you apart from the people to be mine. Amen. Belong to God. Paul understood this. That's why he kept calling them saints. Even though you may not have it all together, you still belong to God. He Amen. still purchased you. Amen. You still belong to God. Amen. And he Amen. so he kept addressing them based upon who they were spiritually rather than what they were seeing from each other. Uh -huh. And this is a big mistake. We don't see people belonging to God. Mm -hmm. Maybe they made a mistake. Do you not make mistakes? That's good, Bishop. Um, your name, Lord Jesus? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. And Paul saw that. And this, this is what, he, what, what Leviticus said. Mm -hmm. I have set you apart from the people to be mine. What did God say wanted? He wanted a holy nation, Amen. a nation set apart. Even in the temple, you had the holy place, and then behind the temple was the most holy place. Mm -hmm. And God told Moses to separate the two, mm -hmm. put a curtain between, between. them. Mm -hmm. This, this is exclusively for my use. Mm -hmm. Nobody went into the Holy of Holies but the high priest. Yes. And he had to have on certain clothes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he had to be dressed a certain way. And he went in one time a year, once a year. Mm -hmm. And that was on the Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. God never wanted in their minds that he was this common God. He mm -hmm. said, I'm holy yes. and I should be separate. We shouldn't deal with God the way we deal with other people and joke about God. None of that is funny. I, right. I, I want to tell you something here. The holy place was separate. The people were separate. And in First Chronicles chapter uh, 23, we'll find Aaron had to be separate, the high priest. Now, that's, that's, that's very important. Aaron, the high priest, he was not the common priest. My God, in, in, in 1 Chronicles 23, please, please follow me. 1 Chronicles chapter 23, and if we look at verse 13, it says, <clears throat> uh, the sons of Amram, 
that's Moses' dad, were Aaron and Moses. Listen to what the scriptures say. And Aaron was set apart to sanctify himself as most holy. Aaron was set apart to do what now? Sanctify himself as most holy. He was the high priest. He was the only one went into God's presence. And listen to what it says. He and his sons forever mm -hmm. to burn incense before the Lord, mm -hmm. to minister to him, and to bless in his name forever. Amen. Uh, when God gives you that authority to bless and to work for him, that is a wonderful authority because things begin to happen that they don't normally happen. Mm -hmm. I, I looked in the scripture and you find when the prophet was on Mount Carmel and all the prophets of Baal, 450 Elijah. prophets of Elijah the prophet. Mm -hmm. And he prayed mm -hmm. and fire came from heaven. Yes. Man, that's, that's something. Many times fire came. You, you, we find in Leviticus, uh, there were certain times they didn't have to light the fire. Mm -hmm. Fire came from God. Yes. And the people stood in awe. See, the kind of things that God did to let them know that he was with them and that he was who he was is really absent today. It's absent today because I don't believe the sanctity and the devotion to God. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can't be common Amen. and expect a fellowship mm -hmm. with the Holy God. Yeah. Now, G Jesus made it possible That's right. for us to come to God. He said, mm -hmm. you can't get to him but by me. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that shouldn't be taken lightly. Mm -hmm. You don't worship God any kind of way. Uh, you, don't, you don't come before God any kind of way. And I, <clears throat> but I just want to make this, this, this point. When the tabernacle was finished in the last chapter of, of, of Exodus, Exodus chapter 40, uh, when the tabernacle was finished, God did something very spectacular, and, and, and I'm going to end on this note. Exodus, before they journeyed, the last chapter, I think is Exodus 40. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 40. In the last, last part of the Exodus there, uh, yeah, in, in verse 34. Okay. When the tabernacle was complete, Mm -hmm. and, and everything was ready. Now, before we get to Leviticus, that's when God, in Leviticus, God began to tell Israel, this is how you worship me. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. They still at Mount Sinai. They was not traveling during this time. They was getting ready to travel. Okay. And there was a few things I noticed that God was very, very particular about, okay? Follow me yes. by day, mm -hmm. you're going to see a cloud, mm -hmm. and by night, mm -hmm. you're gonna, I'm going to be with you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God Almighty. You, you, you won't have to guess which way to go or what to do. Mm -hmm. You're my people now. Mm -hmm. oh, my God. And, and God says to Moses about the tabernacle was all set, the furniture was in. I want you to see what happened here mm -hmm. in Exodus uh, 40, 34. Mm -hmm. The cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Amen. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud has sudden on it. That's, mm -hmm. that's God. God. That's mm -hmm. God. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Yes. Verse 36. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the sons of Israel would set out. They had to follow God. They couldn't move. It, this, this is so important. Wow. You know, it, it seems like we're wasting our time waiting on the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. waiting on God to give directions. I think it's a serious discipline. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. a lot of things I want to do, but yeah. I said, I have to wait on God. That's right. You call That's me right. lazy, call me slow, call me whatever. Go find the most active place you can find. I really don't care. Yeah. I can't do nothing no more Amen. without God. Amen. I can't. Amen. If he says, sit here till I come back, Amen. then I'm going to find a pillow for this chair because right. I'm going to sit in. <laughs> this, 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 this is the attitude we have to That's have. That's right. Yes. Because Jesus said, without me, 
You can't do it. So it's time for humans to realize Mm -hmm. the things of God should be overseen by God himself. And he gives us the authority to do things, to bless in his name. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to be called to that. You must be appointed by God to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look what happened. Through all their journey, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the sons of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, Mm -hmm. they did not set out until the day when it was taken up. They didn't move when they wanted to move. That's right. They didn't go the way they wanted to go. They had to wait for that cloud. Mm-hmm. And God said, you're going to know it's me because at night I'm going to be fired for you. Amen. It, 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 it's just something. For throughout all their journeys, the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day and there was fire in it by night mm-hmm. in the sight of all the house of Israel. Now, who set that fire? God did. It's God, bro. The Holy Spirit. That's God. So Amen. now they get ready to start. They didn't start. Mm-hmm. And we go to Leviticus and you'll find that God told them exactly how to worship him. Yes. God told them what to do, how to do it. This is where I want to worship. Now, I'm done. I'm done. Are we following the Holy Spirit today? My God. Is God telling us to do all the stuff we're doing? Now, mm. Israel couldn't move unless God say move. They couldn't do nothing. And Moses, mm. he, he couldn't change it. He, he couldn't change it. Aaron couldn't change it. God say forever. Forever, that's right. This, this is it forever. The day of atonement, forever. This, 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 is, this is the feast I want you to have. So I think it's important that we understand we've been set apart. Yes, right. Not over in the corner, mm-hmm. but to Christ. To Christ. Mm-hmm. We've, been, we've, been, we've been set apart just like the Holy of Holies, mm-hmm. <laughs> just like anything else God used. We are different. Amen. Sanctified Amen. is what it is. Amen. And we have to learn to see our brothers and sisters that way. Amen. And that's why Paul called the saints in those churches saints. Amen. Because Amen. he knew who they belonged to. And it was his job to be patient with them and to love them and to bear up with them until they came into the knowledge of it. Amen. Amen. Them. And that's so powerful. And, and just to kind of add to what you, the point you're making and kind of in closing, the fact that the enemy would try to have us think yeah yeah that we are less than we're so undeserving Mm -hmm. we've messed up too many times Mm -hmm. for even god Mm -hmm. to forgive us Mm -hmm. and have mercy on us i'm here to serve notice today that that's a lie Mm -hmm. from the pits of hell you've been redeemed by the blood of jesus you are saved you've been sealed unto god Uh by the holy spirit and God has already made a down payment on your life yes. that he will bring you back to him mm. in eternity. And so what we have to realize is stop listening at what people say mm-hmm. and judging us because of what they see we do. That's right. That's right. Know for yourself that I am I'm a child, child of God. God and the spirit of God lives richly within me, dwells yeah. richly within me. Mm-hmm. And that's a whole nother subject when we get into the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That, that yeah. brings out a whole nother dynamic. Yeah, I, I, I think we did good today to point out, first of all, that the Holy Spirit being with us. Yes, sir. He's the one that leads and guides us. Amen. He's the one that keeps bringing back to our memory and our mind that you are a child of God. Yes. yes. Learn to walk in it. Amen. We, we, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this a little bit. We have our little, little Godson. He's about 18 months old. There's a lot of things he do. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's normal for an 18-month-old baby to do it. I don't expect for him to act like he's 20. That's right. I, That's I'm right. the fool. <laughs> I, you know, even though people have been in the church a long time, they may have only been saved three months. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. they've come to an understanding and agreement of certain things. And it's one thing I'm going to ask the people of God to do. Live your real life. Mm, that's good. Live it, live it truthfully. Mm-hmm. If there's a problem, confess it, move yeah. on. Mm-hmm. Do not hypocrite mm. and try to play saved and sanctified, knowing there's a lot of anger, animosity, and so many other habits in your life. You don't have to do that. God wants you to understand. I set you apart unto Christ 
you are in Christ, and I could receive you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we Spirit. bless your name. Yes. We bless your name. Amen. 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 Um, Amen. I think comments. the last thing that we can leave is that there's a turning point in all our lives. Yeah. And God daily gives us an opportunity to return back to him. I want to make an appeal to those of you that are joining with us today that this opportunity has been afforded by God our Father through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with the help of the Holy Spirit. And it is in this day, not tomorrow, but in this day, that we can come back in right relationship and accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. So my prayer is that we believe in our, we confess with our mouth yes. and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead and that Jesus is Lord of the living and that Jesus loves you with the love of God mm -hmm. and he has given us the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit. That's right. to lead and guide us and to bring that relationship with, into that place that God has purpose for it to mm -hmm. be in eternity. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Well, let's, let's, let's pray. Father God, we love you with the whole heart. We thank you, O oh God, that you've seen us in eternity, O oh God, before we were yet formed. Yes. You knew us, yes. O oh God. And in knowing us, O oh God, you had already seen it necessary to set us apart and behold and give us the title of saints, O oh God. Saints. Not predicated on what we do in this day and in, 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 in what people see us do, but what you know concerning the spirit that rests, rule, and abide in us. So, Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus, Jesus. that Jesus. there is a Holy Ghost boldness and a revelation that come to your hearts of your people, that they will stand up, brush themselves off, throw their shoulders back and declare that I am the righteousness of God, God in, in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. This day is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Cause your people to rejoice like never before, regardless of circumstances, regardless of situations, regardless of what people say, let them know what you have said. And if they are to know your position concerning them, give them an urgency to open your word like never before. Mm -hmm. For it is in your word that your word become a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So as we journey through this dispensation of time, we know it's life. We would end up in the place yes. set apart to bring glory to you yes. in Jesus name. We thank you now for this opportunity. Yes. Cause us now yes. to grab hold of it like never before mm. in Jesus name. We'll see you again. Next Sunday, saints of the Most High God. Amen. God bless you.